Hi everyone, welcome to some questions on atomic structure and isotopes. So starting off with our first question, we are asked what is meant by the term isotope. So starting off with a definition straight away. Again, if you know your definitions, you'll be absolutely fine. If not, that's something you'd go away and make sure you get them learned, get them committed to memory, because you do get a fair chunk of marks from your definitions. So an isotope means saying we have the same element or same number of protons, but has a different number of neutrons. So nice easy definition, hopefully no problems there. We then are asked why different isotopes have the same chemical properties. Well, the reason why anything will have a particular chemical property comes from the number of electrons that they have. So different numbers of neutrons, yet, yeah, but they've got the same protons and also therefore the same electrons. So again, any slight variation on those there, you can have that. We then have a table to complete protons, neutrons, electrons. Yep, these questions do come up. Um, and you'd be surprised the number of times that I've seen people who focus on the complicated stuff, but then they ignore the simple stuff, something like this, and they make some silly mistakes. They try and rush through it, make silly mistakes, and it is a little bit soul-destroying when you see those marks being lost. Now, what we need is we've got 121, we've been told there. Now, we don't need to go to the periodic table because we have been told up here we've got an atomic number of 51. If that wasn't there, you can go to the periodic table, you can find it, and you'd be all good there. So, hopefully, we know that if we've got an atomic number of 51, that's going to be our protons and our electrons, and then do 121 minus 51, and that'll give us 70. So, hopefully, nice three marks to pick up that. Okay, next question, carrying on. We've got define the term relative atomic mass, three marks. Again, it's a definition. If you know your definitions, they're very easy marks to pick up. So relative atomic mass, we need the mean mass of an atom compared to one twelfth the mass of an atom of carbon-12. So it's a standard definition, comes up quite a lot. Make sure that we know that one. Three easy marks, we get all those bits there. Okay, and then the next part of the question, we've been given some information, so always good to highlight bits of information if we have it. So we've been asked to work out the mass number of the other isotope. Now doing relative atomic mass calculation, when you've been told everything, is quite straightforward. But this is just trying to overcomplicate things a little bit for you. It's only worth one mark because again, it's taking something from GCSE and just putting a slight twist on it. So, this is what our setup should be. We've been told what the final answer should be is 121.8. Now, we normally take of our isotopes and our percentage, take your percentage, times it by the mass number, plus, and then the same for the other isotopes that you've got. But in this instance, we don't know what the other isotope is. That's the mass we're trying to work out. Now, we're told we have 60% of one of them. So if we're only told there's only one other isotope, that means the other one must be 40% to then make up to 100%. And then we divide it by 100. So that's why we've got that question mark in there. We're trying to find that what that question mark value is. And then pretty much from there, it's just once you've got that set up, it's just, if you know your maths, which you should do, it's just simple rearrangement of that. So 100, I've taken it up to the other side, times divided by 100, other side times by 100. I've worked out that one bracket. I can then take that to the side and then divide it by 40 and it's 123. Nice and easy, nice and straightforward. And then final question. Again, fairly simple and straightforward, but again, you'd be surprised who, how many people drop these marks. Which row should it be for MN2+. plus? Now, just got to be a little bit careful of that 2 plus in there. So we can go to our period table and just make sure we know what we're dealing with. So normally, MN has got 55 and then 25 for atomic number. Now, if we then work out what those values should be, it should be 25, 30 and 25. Now, that's what it would be, but we have to take into account that 2 plus charge. That 2 plus charge means we've lost, if you to get become positive, we've got to lose negativity. So we must have lost electrons. So do I become two plus? 
must have lost two electrons. So it would be 25 electrons goes down to 23 electrons. So we're looking for 25, 30, 23. So that would be our first row there, which is A. Okay, and that will do it for these questions today. See you next time.